So you want to start self-filming, eh? Yeah. You think you've got what it takes? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Let me guess, you've been hunting for a while and you want to start recording your hunts. Either you want to start a channel or you just want to watch your shot back or it's just fun to document the experience. Regardless of the reason, you want to know what the best equipment is, how to set it up, what's the easiest way to do it, and how to get crisp, clean footage. Well, we're by no means experts, but we've been doing this for two years and we have come a very long way and we do have some recommendations for you. So stick around, nerd. Today's episode is all about self-filming and filming your hunts. It's a huge thing in the industry that a ton of people are starting to do. It's something we didn't really get into till like two years ago and trust me, we've came a long way. We really have. Let me run you through last year's setup. I got my backpack. Got my camera. B-roll. Main camera. Yes, we did use this exact self-filming setup to film Prodigy. The biggest deer I've ever seen. And Turkey Foot. However, there were some issues with it. Issues? What do you mean? Well, I mean the backpack was too small, the camera arm was way too heavy, our cameras were easy to use but not up to industry standard, and our mics were unreliable. Now I'm not saying this equipment won't work, I'm just saying that it could be better. Last year, as our main camera, we ran the Canon 80D. Here's some of our best clips with this camera. Now some of you are saying, what's wrong with that footage? Well, nothing, really. I actually kind of liked this camera. It was super easy, really reliable, literally always worked. We filmed in full HD 1080p at 60 frames a second, so in post we could slow it down to 50% and not lose any quality. And if you're new to filming, I highly recommend this camera. However, we wanted to upgrade to something a little bit more industry standard. Something to hit that 4K mark that you see with content creators, YouTubers, and TV shows. So we chose the Sony a7 IV. Films in 4K, 60 frames a second, exactly what we're looking for. Here's an example of what this camera can do. Let's go ahead and digitally zoom this in post to times two. This camera also features an ultra slow-mo. Overall, the Sony a7 IV was just a better fit for our channel. I highly recommend if you're into filming and you want to upgrade, that you upgrade to the Sony a7 IV simply because of all of its features, it's easy to use, it has a decently long lasting battery, and the quality you get from this if you really know how to use the settings are amazing. Above filming in 4K 60 frames a second, you can also film in 10 bit with a cinematic mode which means when you go to edit this in post-production, it gives you a lot more flexibility with the color grading and how you want your footage to look. Now let's talk B-roll cameras, which is extremely important when self-filming because you want to capture a second angle. You want a secondary shot facing you to get your reactions to really capture the authentic moment. And for B-roll camera, we recommend the GoPro Hero 10. The GoPro Hero 10 has 5.3K capability at 60 frames a second, which will fit in perfectly with your other footage. Now the mic on it isn't the best, so I recommend getting a media mod. You can get one for around 80 bucks. It basically just fits over the GoPro and has an external mic that's a bit better. It also films in a super wide angle, which means you can capture everything even when the camera is close. So yeah, for, for the B-roll cameras, we have GoPros, but um, we have a GoPro Hero 9, which we don't use that much. That's more of like a backup B-roll camera. We used a GoPro Hero 10 because at the time we purchased it, it was the latest. But yeah, so I'm basically talking to you through this. Um, and basically I just use it and I clip it into this um, L bracket. I don't even know what it's called, but it's super easy. It's, it fits in the bag really nice and it's easy to screw in. Sometimes, depending <laughs> on what say. 
One thing that has made our self-filming extremely easy is the GoPro remote. It connects to your GoPro wirelessly. You can click it once to turn it on and then you can click it again to start recording. This makes recording hands-free for your B-roll camera, which is extremely important, especially when there's deer around. I usually keep it in my hand warmer and then I turn it on whenever I hear footsteps. Brief interruption, if you have any questions about any of these products, please join our Discord server, link in the description. It's basically a place where we can chat openly with you guys. YouTube isn't really meant for back and forth conversation, but Discord is. So hop in and we'll try to answer your question as soon as possible. Now let's chat about the camera arm. Last year we ran a Muddy Outfitter camera arm and it worked once you put it up, but man, this thing was really heavy, really bulky. And for mobile hunters like us, it just wasn't practical. So this year we upgraded to the fourth arrow Talon Micro Triple Arm. A lightweight, extremely sturdy, easy to use camera arm. It has been perfect, haven't had any problems with it, and it is much more manageable when putting it in your bag. We also run their fluid head. You attach the fluid head on the camera arm and it attaches to the camera and allows you for smooth, steady fluid movements. But what about the audio? Audio is equally as important as video. What, don't believe me? Okay. What's better, this clip? Or this clip? Capturing good audio, even in a controlled setting, is hard enough, let alone in the woods with wild animals. This year we have made one of my favorite upgrades. We bought the Rode Wireless Go mics. Just listen to how crispy this audio is. He's been showing up every day, once a day, at night for about a week. But yesterday he just broke that pattern and uh, he showed up twice, both at night. But he's starting to feel more comfortable around here, so. Now there are a couple different options for the Rode Wireless Go mics. There's one receiver and you can either get one transmitter or two transmitters. I recommend buying two, one for the shooter and one for the cameraman. And if you're filming alone, one for yourself. And I usually like to clip the other one by where I believe the shooting lane is. And that way you can get the audio of you talking, breathing, whispering. But you can also pick up the audio of the crunching of the leaves down by where the deer are at. Here's an example of a time I clipped one transmitter to my coat and one transmitter down by the cell camera, right where the shooting lane was. You can literally hear everything. Another super cool thing about the Rode Wireless Go mics is you can adjust the sensitivity of the microphone. So if you're hunting, you can turn that sensitivity all the way up so that you can capture everything you're saying when you're giving an opening interview and you're whispering, but also it can capture a lot of the movement around you in the woods. Last year we used a shotgun mic. Uh, we used the Video Mic Go from Rode. Um, we have two of these and both of them kind of work on and off. It has kind of like a weird static. The static in this shot was caused by the audio jack being worn down and there's just no way to know until after you watch the footage being shot. So it's kind of risky, but it's a super easy mic. Here's an example of the shotgun mic when it actually is working. And it's 60 degrees right now, so pretty stoked about that. They're gonna be up and moving for sure. It just rained yesterday. I picked a stand with a good wind also. Um, now there is a lot of environment ambience, which could either be good or bad, just depending on what you want. But as long as it's pointed towards you, it's gonna pick up whatever you're saying. And one last recommendation, something that's gonna make this all easier. It's not necessarily a self-filming piece of equipment, but it is the bag that carries it all. The e Stock X2 bag. It's specifically designed to carry as much as possible. You will not have any issue carrying all the equipment that I just recommended and your hunting gear. So let's recap. For our main camera, we run a Sony a7 IV with a 24 to 105 millimeter lens. Our main camera is on a fourth arrow Talon Micro triple arm with a fourth arrow fluid head. For our B-roll camera, we run a GoPro Hero 10 with a media mod, and that is on just a screw on mount that you can buy on Amazon. We usually screw that into the tree. And for audio, we have two options. Our go-to is the Rode Wireless Go mics or a Rode Video Go shotgun mic and we put all this in the Ebrel Stock X2 bag. Now, if you have questions, please comment down below, but the best way to get a hold of us is our Discord server. 
If you don't know what Discord is, it's basically a free app you can download on your phone or your desktop, and it's a way for us to communicate with you. The people who have joined, we know them by name, and we get to even have live video calls weekly where we get to see your faces, and we can just have a live discussion about what's going on in our hunting season, and also just a bunch of goofing off. It's pretty fun. Check it out. Link in the description. Also, all the products that we talked about today will be linked in the description. And if you want to see more videos, if you want us to stick around, smash that like button, and definitely don't forget to subscribe. As always, Creek Kings out. Okay, let's go.